You, you get it started. Years ago, years and years ago, about, it had to be in the 80s sometime. Right. You lived right on the edge of Cuchillo right there. That's right. And I'd always heard about Mike Ritt and Ross Johnson. Okay. And I wanted to hunt lions and bears so bad it just hurt. Yeah. But, I mean, how did you get out here? How did you get to New Mexico? Because you're from Massachusetts, Massachusetts originally. Yeah, that's where I was born and raised. Well, <clears throat> did you hunt with Bob Rawlins? So? Yeah, I did. But just to how did I get here, I bought into a hunting business from Bob Rawlins. Bought it from him, and it was a real fluke. It was in uh, it was in uh, the winter of uh, 1980. I was living in Houston, Texas, and I had a buddy down there. Uh, anyway, it turned out. Uh, he, he got a wild hair, and he, he called this guy, and they used to advertise in the back outdoor life, right. these outfitters, yeah, and he called this guy, his name was Charles Bass, he had a place down there on 4th uh, um, uh, Street, down there in Albuquerque, or down uh, Rio, uh, Rio Bravo, somewhere Rio right Grand. down there, yeah, anyway, I forget, but anyway, the hell of it is, um, <clears throat> this guy, we flew up here from Houston, and he, took, he had a ranch out in Grants, then we went back to work, and then about a month later, he called and said, Hey, there's an outfitter selling his business. I mean, I never had a dream of doing this. I ain't kidding. I always loved hunting, but I never even, the word outfitter never even entered my mind, you know. So anyway, it turns out we came up, and his wife had got the plane tickets, and back then in the Southwest, you could fly a round trip for like 50, 75 bucks from Houston to Albuquerque. Anyway, we come in, and, and, uh, the next day, we went up to see Rollins was the guy selling his business. and uh, Wall Lake, right? Well, no, this is before that. This is before that. So anyway, uh, uh, Rollins lived in Bernalillo. Oh. And, uh, and uh, so we went there, and, and I'll tell you what, just to make it simple, the hounds sold me. Hounds. You know, the hounds, you know. He, and he was a bear hunter. He wasn't a lion yeah. hunter. Lion yeah. hunting wasn't real, real big, it seemed yeah. like, back then. Orville was a, the lion hunter, and there was guys who hunted them, but not like today, you know. Anyway, it turned out, uh, you know, I had uh, saved up some money when I was in the military, and then when I got out, I lucked out on a little investment on gold and silver and cashed it in and did good, and I was footloose, you know, not married, nothing, no, nothing. So uh, I dumped all this money on the business. Business, and that was in summer of '80. By fall, and part of the selling part of the business was uh, there was no elk draw back then. If you booked a hunter, he was coming, you know. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, Rollins had all these hunters coming. My buddy, he was kind of a, a business kind of guy more so. Anyway, it turned out um, all that money was coming in. Well, come November of 1980, all the deer hunts, elk hunts were over, and he didn't hunt lions, so there was no more money. Well, this partner, you know, we couldn't stay afloat. So his wife was fixing to leave him and all that. So anyway, he pulled out and left. So I lost everything. I mean, literally everything. I lost my truck. I had a thirty thirty and a saddle and a bedroll. And that that's no 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 bullshit. <laughs> Rollins, and, and you know, he was a former marine. I was a former marine, and he was a Korea marine. And and him and I seen eye to eye. Yeah, yeah I mean, right. we, we could we could talk. You know. <clears throat> so and and he, you know, I had to give everything back. I couldn't make the payments. He sold the dogs, a couple here, a couple there. So horses, tents, trucks, whatever. Turns out, he let me stay with his family and uh, that winter. And that spring of 81, that following spring, him and his wife came down here to Wall Lake because he would hunt at, at the dines down right. there, mm -hmm. you know, hunt lions in the winter. So he he liked the black range, you know. And, and uh, he came down and he looked at some property down there. You know, there ain't a whole lot of deeded land in the, in the forest. So anyway, like 10 acres. So he came back and he, he, he bought it. And uh, he said, listen, Mike, he said, if you're serious about getting into it, you're welcome to go down there and stay. And, and the forest can't kick you off, you know. And, and you were camped up there by Wall Lake in a, in in a, a tent. tent. In a tent for a long time. A borrowed tent for almost, <laughs> I don't know, almost two years probably off and on. You know. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, who gave me the first dog? I had a friend of Bob Rollins had him, you know. Like you give a guy a pup who never hunts, just a pet, but it was a hound. That was my first, you know. 
I had a friend of his let me borrow a horse. I didn't have nothing. Went down there, camped out. I don't know where I ended up getting dogs at first. I don't even know if I had many at first. But anyway, probably, um, uh, well, anyway, back up just a little bit. I know where I, before I moved into Wall Lake, I went around to Quentin Hulls and Terrell Shelley. And, and I got two pups from Terrell Shelley. I got some pups from uh, from Quentin. Who else? That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. And this was in the early 80s? 81. 81. It was in, would have been in the spring, summer of 81. <clears throat> so it turned out, I just started hunting. Well, that, that allotment down there it was a steeple U. And one day I was going up a canyon and a couple of dogs come up to me. Weren't my dogs, you know. I hadn't run into nobody, and uh, it was Owen Fowler. He lived in the members, and they had that grazing allotment. And he was up there, and he he'd hunt a foot, just walking with his dogs. So I started hunting with uh, with Owen, and Owen they had a sawmill down in the members at the time, and he said, Mike, he said I can't hunt these dogs. They need to be hunted, you know. And uh, anyway, he left me with a couple old dogs. And they were probably pretty much bear dogs, but so what? You know, better, damn sure a lot better than what I had. You know? <laughs> so anyway, it turned out uh, I just hunted the shit out of them. You know, mm. I just hunted every day. Well, then I, I'd run into a guy like Jack Diamond, you know. And they had a, and, and, you know, he'd look at me like, you know, who the hell are you, you know. And we'd get talking and see me. I'd go up to get my mail there. Beaverhead cut get coming from Magdalena. So anyway, it turned out, you know, Jack would say, hey, you know, why I got a cabin over here. Why don't you go and stay over there? You know, so I got to learn country, you know. And anyway, um, and same way with Matt Snayburger. Them guys helped me out a bunch. They really did. Um, because they, you know, there was times that I didn't even have dog food. You know, they, 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 they. So you were pretty broke? Oh, big time, big time. My truck, this is no bullshit. You can ask Jack. My trucks don't even hit the pedal. There was no brakes whatsoever. <laughs> There was no brakes. I'd go off in the Black Canyon in that damn truck in first gear. I remember. Anyway, and I, I hunted down there at Black Canyon. That was in the the bank on the sti- uh, the Diamond Bar Ranch before the Laneys bought it. You know, so I'd hunt all down through there. So that that's pretty much how I got started. <clears throat> and I just hunted. And I and I had taken when I got Ron's business. I had taken a guy fr- from around Dallas who worked for the telephone company. And things were going to hell that that fall of 1980 when we had bought that business. Everything was kind of falling apart. He said, Mike, you get back on your feet. You call me. I'll come hunt with you. And that's no joke. That guy kind of got the ball rolling because I took him that fall, that following fall of 81 on a bear hunt and locked out and caught him a bear. And he told a buddy. And he told, and, and I, I, you know, I don't remember if I caught that. You know, anyway, it turned out that's how, you know, that's so you, how. Did you catch any lions back then? No. I never caught a lion. I never, you know, for one thing, I didn't know, you know, what I was looking at. You know, you, you try to read the dogs, but hell, I didn't know how to read the dogs, you know. I mean, I couldn't tell if a dog was starting a coyote or a jackrabbit. Or, <laughs> <laughs> you just let them run whatever they were I just doing. hunted, you know. I just, you know, and they, they'd catch up to my horse, you know what I mean? And tomorrow will be another day. And go do it again, you know. And well, of course, you could see a bear track, but seeing a lion track is a little tougher, you know. How did you get hooked in with Homer then? Well, uh, Homer Bryant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That go there. That winter, the following winter of 81, winter coming on, Homer and his son Frankie, this guy at Winston bought this ranch from Arizona. He was from Arizona. His name was Ng. And their allotment went over the divide. And he needed some fence work done. Hired Homer and his son. And they packed in there and just, no dogs or nothing. They just camped out, built a fence. While I was in there hunting, by then I had a lot of dogs. I don't know where I ended up, but there's no junk. <laughs> I, I'd hunt 12, 14 dogs every day. Just turn them just, loose and go. Just, and they know, they, you know, if you wear them out, they're with you. Yeah. You know, I mean, sooner or later they start coming around. But anyway... So I, I, um, I met Homer. I remember I was camped down there at Monument Park, and uh, I had my dogs tied out. I was by myself, and him and Frankie rode over from Turkey Run down into Monument Park, and it started snowing. We got up with about six inches of snow on us, you know. And uh, me and Homer hit it off, and Homer said, "You know, I got a couple dogs." He said, "You know, we gotta, 
we had to get together this winter and, and may hunt, you know. And me and you know, me and Homer, we got along great. And his son was a real good guy, got along great. So uh, he was friends with Rod Hill over here on the other side of the Cavallo Mountains. And he said, let's go to the desert country. I'm thinking about going over there. Nobody ever hunts there. And I know there's lions in there. And we did. And Rod Hill put us up in an old fallen down adobe old ranch headquarters and we stayed over there and hunted that winter that would have been 82 uh the winter of yeah the winter of 82 and then uh i went up from there i went to hermosa the next spring i heard about hermosa i'd never been and anderson owned the ladder then it was a diamond a and uh there was a cowboy at hermosa with his wife good people and and i just rolled in there one day with a i, I ended up getting a horse trailer um, I don't. I don't think I had a mule yet then. I don't think I did. No. Anyway, it turned out um, that guy was, you know, he, he he was a good guy. This cowboy up in Hermosa. And I told him I was going to go over to the Seiko and camp. He said, Yeah, yeah. Back then, you've probably been in there. I don't know, but now they've got the roads cut off. But I used to pull a damn gooseneck all the way up this, you know, this. Anyway, and I that we had a spring bear season. And the first day I hunted in there, I caught a big old thumper bear off the backside of Victoria. Lost the dog. Got way up there on Victoria Peak in the afternoon. And I heard one old dog. I heard one bark. And I bailed off there, leading that horse. I got down there and had a big old boar. Anyway, that country was always, always good. So I just started hunting there a lot, you know. And that cowboy there... Uh, you know, they were good to me. And then I'd hunt on the ladder a little bit. And that guy who ran the ladder, his name was Royce Griggs. And, uh, right. and, uh, I think he's dead. I think he just yeah, died. He just died. Yeah, about a year ago, mm -hmm. maybe, or something. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> anyway, he, he, uh, he, he was a good son of a gun. And, and I had caught a Tom down in there. And, uh, and, uh, Roy said, Mike, you need a good horse. You need a good horse, you know. And, uh, he said, we got a horse that don't, don't like cows, don't work cows good. And, and he said, but it's a traveling booger. And his name's Everyday, because he's that, he's a, he was kind of a strawberry roan, you know, gelding. But anyway, he gave him to me. And he wasn't lying. You could pound on that he horse. Could go. Every day, throw a saddle on like the first day. You know, just, just a traveling good horse. Anyway, so that, that kind of, that how I got, you uh, know. When did you trade horses for mules? I bought my first mule from Ray Niles at the Slash Ranch. Yeah, he was at... And uh, it was a little old gray Mexican mule. Had one of the big old Mexican brands on his hip. Great big ones. Yeah. 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 And so you went straight to mules after that, or have you had I, I I pretty much did, but, you know, a lot of the stuff was just like most guys. You used what you You had. read all these old stories. Yeah. And you get them guys, a lot of them fell back on mules. Yeah. Just because they could take the abuse and still keep going, you know? Is tough. A horse used to keep him out for several days, tied out at night, and jump up the next morning. Man, he's drawn up and ain't getting good enough feed. That mule, you, you know, keep on going. So that's the big deal. You know. Well, did you learn a lot from Homer then, or did you? Oh yeah, I learned a lot from Homer. You know, I had a friend who you, you heard me talk, Pat Wanton. He said if Dave said he just got killed. Yeah, yeah, I. I Dave Handridge yeah. called me and told me. Yeah. <clears throat> but Pat Wantland said if Homer had had the time to hunt, he was just a cowboy, just to work, you know, hunt one or two days. Mm -hmm. He said if Homer Bryant would have had the opportunity, he'd been more famous in the hound dog world than Dale Cameron. He said that Homer had the savvy about him. So, what was it about him? That <clears throat> just that he knew the country he, he, or knew he, how he, he knew, knew how to breed dogs. He said <clears throat> Homer was the one that went to the state penitentiary in Florence, Arizona and got the old bloodhound bitch that they crossed on that put everybody in Arizona into the half bloodhound deal. And they could take those dogs at 18 months, they was catching lions consistently. And, uh, so you think a lot of those good Arizona dry ground lion hounds that have evolved from that bloodhound? They go back to that, their central blood bloodlines, they go back to old Greta, they called her Greta. She could get bred to a border collie, and them pups would catch a line. They would run off <laughs> and catch it. Hmm. What was the, what was your first really good dog? You think that you had that? I mean, that you thought was exceptional. I had a little. I had a. a, a I met a guy that was a friend of Jack Diamond up at Beaverhead. He was over there. Maybe he had hunted with him. He was from Tennessee, and he was a coon hunter, young guy. 
And uh, and he hunted with me, and he said, "Mark, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you, send you a pup." And he sent me a little Walker pup, and it was a registered dog. And I went to Dalhart, Texas, to pick it up. I remember, and uh, came back in the front seat in my lap in the truck, and it was just a little Walker. Anyway, I raised it from a pup, and, and he turned out he was probably my first, you know. What did you call her? Mike? I called him Shine. Shine. I called him his name. His whole name was Moonshine, but I anyway, whatever. Yeah. No. So yeah, but um. Would he cold trail Mike? Or what? Yeah, he he'd be he'd be quiet. He wouldn't quit a track, but he, he wasn't real mouthy. But when he opened, he you know, he he if he opened, it was good. You know, yeah. <clears throat> Tree good and everything. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, mixing up them dogs. I you know the thing about this hunting is, and you know I have to tell you guys, it's the bottom line is the old saying on the wet saddle blankets. You know. Bah. You know, tomorrow's another day. Do it again. You know, what happened today? I don't know what happened, That's but right. tomorrow we'll find out. Tomorrow, you know. Just stay Jan Brown said he'd hunt with that guy, uh, Blackie Woods, down there in Texas, in, in West Texas. He said he'd come riding in the end of the day, and, you know, he'd ask Blackie, well, Blackie, what do what you think happened? And Blackie said, I don't know. You'd have to ask the dogs. Yeah, that's my take on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, I mean, family will ask me, what happened today? I said, I don't know. You'll have to go talk to them. Yeah. Say, who's yeah. I, don't, I, can, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, why don't you know? I said, well, it's kind of like Bud Welty told me one time. said, if uh, if he could smell a line track, he wouldn't have the dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but after yeah. that, did you raise your own dogs, or did you go get? <clears throat> yeah, you know, just get them wherever between you could. the between the Shelley dogs and Homer dogs, and that mm. little dog, I just started having pups and hunting them, you know. And I'm bad about not writing stuff down. I mean, you know, I mean, you lose a lot of good dogs over the years, and you you wonder how I'm going to get by when I lose that dog. I mean, I've wondered that laying in camp, thinking, you know, yeah. what's going to happen when I lose that dog, you know. Well, you know, you just something always steps up, though. Mike. Well, yeah, you just keep going, you just yeah. keep going. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, what's his name? <clears throat> Old, uh, Pete used Janice telling me Pete used told him years ago. He's when you, he lost a good dog. He said, "Well, you find out how much you really want to hunt." That's true. Because you got to make another one. Yeah. How do you make them? <laughs> you pound on it. <laughs> Is that? training your dogs you just take them out and just just hunt them just, just hunt, hunt them. them you know and and uh yeah i mean uh, you know there's no doubt whatever the word luck comes into it there's no doubt you know i mean you pick the right canyon to go up yeah. that day and you get something caught but yeah it's all part of it you just you know um biggest you know i don't think there's a whole lot of guys that do 10 day line hunts anymore and I heard that at Warner Glen, that's what he does, but I don't know. Um, but, I, you know, I've always, you know, I mean, you just ain't got enough time. You're tapping on my... Oh, oh. yeah, you just ain't got enough time. You know, some yeah. of these guys think a five-day hunt, five days, you're just getting warmed up. Some of them down to four days now, Mike. Well, you know, them snow hunters or something like that, I don't know. I, 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 I mean, yeah, 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 you know. You do 10-day hunts now? Yeah, I've always done 10-day hunts. And a lot of times, I, if I don't have a guy coming in after it, I'll say, hey, you stay as long as you can. Just stay and we'll... Just stay. We'll just keep going, you know. And yeah. when you do a 10-day hunt, y'all are out on the ground every every day? Well, it just depends. You know, the thing about a 10-day hunt is you got enough time where if you're over here hunting and, you know, you're not having no luck or not liking it or something, you can pull out and go somewhere else. And if you got a day of travel, you don't feel like you're hurt, you know. Yeah. As far as shorting yourself on time, sure. you know. But, but, uh, yeah, some of these guys, you know, everybody, you know, you see all these pictures now and everybody's got to, you know, so that makes it, it makes it look easy. Well, I'll just go, yeah, I get guys calls, hey, yeah, I like to, you know, call a lion a cat. I said, that, you know, I don't like that. You know, I always tell them it's a lion. It ain't a damn, you know, let's go cat hunting. I said, ah, you know. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that, but. When did, you, did I mean, when you first started guiding, it was bears then. Right, right, yep, yep. But, and, and, and then, uh, you know, uh, like I said, that following spring, or in the spring of 82, I went to Hermosa, and I caught a female lion up there. After hunting with Homer all winter, I had a couple dogs that would, you know, work a lion, 
You know? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. After hunting all winter, and, and I'd catch a line, and of course, just kept going, kept going. Go, go, let's see what's over that ridge. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Didn't Orville tell you one time the way you catch a line, just keep making bigger circles? Well, that was old buddy all red. Jack, I was over there at Wall Lake, and I went up to Jack Diamonds. He said he's going over there to Glenwood, and he went to school with uh, Bucky all red. And he said, uh, I'm going to go over there to Glenwood, and Bucky's dad was an old lion hunter, Buddy already, uh, and he yeah, hunted yeah. a lot with uh, Clell. Clell, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were, you know, <clears throat> he said, why want to come? <clears throat> so anyway, I went over there, and they had that bar, you know. Right. And went in there and sat down, and, and Bucky introduced me to his dad, and we sat yeah. down, and let's have a beer, you know. And and uh, and Buddy was a former Marine. He, 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 he we, we, we talked the same talk, you know, and good. And uh, I told him I had caught bears, but I had not caught a lion. And I said, what's it take? You know, what's it take? He said, sounds like you're doing everything right. Just keep going. He said, that's all I can tell you. (laughs) Keep going, you know. And he he, he said, and I don't know how, I don't know how, the way I took this. He said, uh, you know, these hounds, he said, I've never done drugs or nothing like that. But he said, from what I hear about these drugs... Running these hounds must be similar. <laughs> That's what he told me, and I laughed, you know. And, and, and uh, but yeah, because there's so many days, you know, you yeah. throw your hands up, you throw your hands up, and go, you know. I mean, I tell everybody the happiest I've ever been is with my hounds, and the and the saddest or the maddest or whatever you want to call it I've ever been is with my hounds. Happens in one day sometimes. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you can get up one morning and you walk out there and a good dog dead in his dog box. Yeah. You go, why? Why? You know, why, 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 you know. it happens. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, so, yeah, you know. So, but you also started guiding elk and deer hunters. I had to to make a living, you know. Yeah. That's the thing about this, you know. Old Terrell Shelley used to say, you know, these guiding outfitters, these guiding outfitters, you know. Well, you know, the Lees did the same thing. They, if they, if there was elk when they were hunting, they would have taken elk hunters too to help pay the bills. I mean, if you do it full time, you know, you, you, whatever it takes. I mean, and, you, I, and the other th- side of that is you're out. You may be up on a ridge with some damn, you know, some deer hunter, and there's a scrape. And then two weeks, you got a hunter coming in. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're in a way you're, you're scouting. You're out in the ground. You're you're on the ground anyway. Cutting so. for sign. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. You go. And you know, learn a new country. Yeah. Learn a new country, and you can't. You you know, there's no such thing as knowing too much country. Right. No and such you, thing. I mean, and you hunt a lot of country that really not many people are willing to go into. I mean, I you pack know. in up there, and, and yeah, yeah, um, I do. The you know, I, I I like that country. I don't like seeing people. Yeah. Just like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, we. Yeah. Yeah, of course, you've seen us. We've stayed in your camp a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. there, I, you know, all the times that I've been up through there, you're the only one I've run into. Yeah, right. So right. yeah, right. further down, uh, towards that Black Canyon, that uh, On the other Webb, side. Webb. Yeah, Gary Webb. He hunts the yeah. other side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've yeah. bumped into yeah. him over there. But. Yeah. No, I know. I know. But yeah. Um. um yeah, um, well, these Did you young guys. Much with Orville when you? No, I've only hunted. Actually, only I think only two days with Orville ever. You know, I remember walking up the bottom over there in the San Mateos up Nogal Canyon one afternoon and looking for. You know, just went over there, and uh, it was just some slick rock. You know, just in the bottom. He said, "Man, the track going up here." I kind of looking, you know, <laughs> and I don't say nothing. I'm not coming. Kind of, yeah. There, there's the track. And I don't say nothing. He says, "You see that track?" <laughs> I go, "You know, I, I don't, I don't see that track. I don't know what to tell you." <laughs> ah, right there, I, you know, it's on rock. Like, look at that, you know. Hell, it'd have to be a saber-toothed tiger fossilized <laughs> to see it. <laughs> you know, but he just jacking with you. you he know. told me he had me get out of the truck one time. I was over there on the ladder with him, and he said, "Jump out right there and see if that's a lion track." Yeah. You see, it looks like a lion track. Jump out there. And I got out there, you know, man, and I just wanted to make it into a lion track so bad. Right. I'm looking and looking, and finally he stuck his head out the window and hollered and said, Get either you. it is or it isn't. And yeah, he said, yeah. don't take that long. Yeah, you know? don't take that long. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, um, I was waiting on a, 
you know, something from him as far as a somebody do a book or something on him, you know, the way they yeah, do it, yeah. talk into a thing like this. You know, then, he started you know. to have a web page, and I think it was his daughter, and they had a couple stories on there, but they didn't follow through with it. Right. right. I don't they didn't know. do anything, right. and I would have liked to have gone and talked <clears throat> to him. You know, yeah. and Orville was always nice to me. Yeah. There, there were a lot of guys that, you know, he did, wasn't real fond of, and he wasn't yeah. the friendliest guy in the world, but he would call me, you know, they had... They had that Tom that was collared, and he called me one day and 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 said, "Hey, he said that 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 Tom's right above your camp, right there. He's up there at Granite Peak, you know." He said, "You need to get up there." And of course, I couldn't go. And then he called me another time and told me about it. He said, "I got a friend of mine is down there hunting, you know, uh, uh, south of Kingston. There, he said, cut a deer hunt and cut a big lot, big Tom line track. He said, you need to get over there. So he's always friendly to me. Yeah. But he, he I mean, he was also hard on me a couple times too. Yeah. Yeah." <laughs> Yeah, probably well deserved. Ah, uh, who you know, whatever uh, you know, he just he just you know, tough old good. You tough. know, loved he loved okay. the dog. That's all you can say. Tough guy. He tough loved guy. the dogs. You yeah. know, he, he you know, he had dogs probably and did it longer than probably than, you know, as far as I know, it's probably a record. I don't know if anybody's lived as long as Orville and, and still was active. Still hunting, still catching lions yeah. after eighty. They yeah, said I th- yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So you know, he's still you know. Um, you know, there's a lot to be said for that. I mean, geez, you know, he had a lot of determination. You know, that's that's really something. I did think. you, did you, you caught lions in the caballos also, didn't you? Yeah. Right well, now, all they do is snare it. You know. <clears throat> Don't get me started on snares. I, I know, I'm with you. What? I just, I got no use for them. You know, it's it's, it's an insult to a lion catch a lion in a trap or a snare but you know i can see where guys don't have no other means you know what i mean is eating something you know and that snare is out and there that, working 24 7 right but i mean as far as in the name of bighorn sheep bunch of damn yeah well the guy told yeah. me that those sheep are born looking for a place to die anyway. i think that's right i think that's right yeah anyway right but, but you hunted down there in the in i hunted in the pelon silos i hunted on uh, Avery Hurt's place, the Alamo Wacos. When I was hunting down there, the Hatchets was a game refuge, and the people who had it, their name was Everhart, and nobody hunted there. You wouldn't. There was no dog hunting allowed in the Hatchets. Oh, it was yeah. a game refuge. Nobody was allowed to hunt there. I mean, I'd been, I'd be south of there on the Alamo Wacos, looking over at that mountain, thinking, man, that'd be a nice, you know, got a big old rough face, and it's sure enough as rough as you want to get it, I guess. But um, but yeah, yeah. Good lion, a lot of lions down there. Or? I don't think there's a lot of lions anywhere. Not yeah, anywhere. I'm with you, Mike. I don't think there's a lot of lions <clears throat> anywhere. You know, they are where you find them. You know, <clears throat> about the same as it's always been. Yeah, I think so. There. I think maybe there's more lions now, only because these damn elk. You know, these elk have scattered so much. I, I don't know if it, if it, if that's even right or not, but it just seems like the more food they got, it makes maybe it increases the population. I don't know. But our deer population ain't worth a damn, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's no doubt they've moved <clears throat> in to kill an elk. They kill the hell out of elk, you know? What, what do you think? The coyotes on the on the deer, you think? Or? That's what I say. I say the coyotes are the biggest thing on the deer for, you know. To me, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah that, you know, I talked to that trapper. He traps lions. He, he's a state. Oh, I'm sure you know him. uh down here, at Radium Springs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I know what's his name. About. Yeah, yeah. Can't remember his name. Yeah. Anyway, but he believes that that there's more lions now because back when they trapped the coyotes or or used the 1080 on the coyotes, that that probably killed a lot of lions too. I don't know. He may be right. I don't know. I don't know. I, I you know, when I first started hunting, I don't think people were using 1080. Really? You know, like I said, I hunted on the west side of the Black Range. I'm sure there was plenty of lions there but I didn't know what the hell I was you know you think there's more lion hunters now than there was back then oh I for sure for sure there there's no doubt about that there's probably you know oh yeah a lot more lion hunters you know and the only reason they're lion hunters is to me is the populations had to increase because if there's that many lions to catch they wouldn't be hunting them if they were you know but there's not as many that hunt the way. The way no, the the way the way that we hunt is whatever you want to call it, harder, whatever. Saddling up and making a circle is a lot different than driving roads, you know. 
And them guys, if the Lions weren't there, them driving them roads wouldn't pay off. So there's got to be, you know, the Lions have got to have spread out, or maybe they've always been that. But it seems like, it seems to me, I hear more, you know. And the cameras. And I, I mean, a lot of guys using cameras. Yeah, but I just think the, <clears throat> the population is the way it is because of the elk, I think. I think there's so much because damn food for a lion now. There's elk everywhere, everywhere. So, you know, um, and I don't even, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but, but, uh, but yeah, you know, um, it just seems like there's a lot of hunters now. Well, there wouldn't be a lot of hunters if there wasn't many lions, you know, if they couldn't catch them and put them on their phone, they'd, they'd get rid of them dogs, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, Sharing yeah. Sharing those pictures on, on social media. Yeah. yeah, you know, look what I caught, you know, 200 pound Tom. <laughs> or bigger <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah it's you know that's the way it is no you do it as long as you can the biggest thing is your health you no doubt about it just like Orville you know well you've always I mean I've heard stories of you walking across the wilderness and swimming the lake and doing yeah, all kinds of things huh? but, but you know yeah, whatever. Does that come I mean, from your time in the service? That you probably, probably. Yeah, you know, you like that stuff, that's all. I mean, you know. Yeah, and that, you That's know. part of hunting, though, too, you know? I sure. mean, if you're, if, I mean, yeah. Something happens, you gotta, you know, yeah, it's, you gotta be able to pull your weight, you and know? And that, you know, and I think that so much, and I've talked to younger guys that I've hunted with in the past, you know, and that, I mean, the way we hunt or the way I like to hunt, and the way you've always hunted is is you got to enjoy that process, not just necessarily actually catching the lion, but everything right. that goes with it. No, know? it's the freedom. It's yeah. the freedom. And, you know, that's the thing about the dog hunting, too. You know, you can like going elk or deer hunting, but you got a season. you got five days here. you got ten days there. And then, you know, you hope, well, now you hope you draw next year so you can go hunt, you know. With the dogs, you're out. Just I mean the freedom, you know. I mean that was one of the things that really got me about when I first started. That's like, damn, you know. When I first started, it was eleven month season. And then they cut it back. Now, of course, you got a year round deal, you know. But um, but um, yeah, that's the big thing because you're in pretty much in the now. But there's more seasons for everything. They got you know deer hunts, elk hunts going all the time, and javelina hunts in the winter. But it. it wasn't too many years ago. The only thing in the winter was lion hunting. Exactly. Yeah. I remember that. You know? So if you were out, you know, and it was you and the rancher. Now everybody's got a side-by-side. -side, you know? But that's the way it is. You ain't going to get rid of it. You know? No. You ain't going to get rid of it. That's what makes that wilderness so nice is you can get up in there and yeah. get away from a lot of that. Yeah. It's hard. I mean, a lot of places. Like I went up to Nevada and I hunted up there in northern Nevada and they got that jaw bitch wilderness, and I'd always heard about it, but I never really looked and seen how big it was. Well, it's a little wilderness. It's not that big, and they got little two-track roads all the way around it. And, uh, you know, and you're, yeah. you're there on your mules, and I took a pack mule and rode my mule, and you get up in there, and then, you you know, there's a buggy or side-by-side -side or a four-wheeler or something, yeah. and it just kind of, you know, they're running all over the place. And, and you know, that's it takes what the fun like, out of it. Anyway. Yeah. It takes the fun out of it, you know. Um, uh, you know, and I like to give a guy, I mean, I don't know, I, I'd like to think, I probably have stepped on people's toes over the years, but I don't think many, if if, if, if really any, you know, over there, like where you talked about talking with Clay, you know, over there in the, in the, the Wahoos, and I've hunted it a little, but not, not hardly, you know. And the San Mateos on the west side, you know, uh, old Daryl and Roy Dean Welty, I always... You know, that's their country. I always honored so it. So y'all you know? kind of... Kind of I mean, it kind of, you know, I mean, the, yeah, there's times, there's, you know, it's just like anybody, if somebody calls you about something, sure. you know, yeah, you can't help it. You know, your dogs are tied up. You you got a chance to catch something, you go. You go. You, know, you go, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's all public land. It's yeah. not like it's private and you're trying to keep somebody off of it, right? Right. <clears throat> but there's, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, unwritten rules, you know. But sure. still respectful to a point, you know. For on, sure. Yeah. On, yeah. On, they but public land, you still respect yeah, them. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's yeah. you know we got a call, or I had a rancher. I won't say who it was that said, you know, we need you to come out here and see if you can catch some of these lions. And yeah. The guy we got on here now, he won't kill any of these females. He's just gonna he, he guides hunters, and all he's gonna kill is toms. And and he said we need you to come in here and kill these, you know, 
we want him out of here. And I, and I thought, well, you know, first place I said, I don't have time to go, but if I did, you know, then you go in there and then the guy, one of your lion hunting buddies or friends, you know, you're stepping on their toes and that wouldn't be fair either. You know? Yeah. And a lot of them guys call you and want these lions out of here. They, you know, the sad part is they make it sound easy. Yeah. <laughs> and they act like they're behind every tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I tell them, come and ride with me. Let's, yeah, let's yeah. count the line tracks. That's right, Mike. I've told them I've got another mule at home. Y'all saddle and you can follow me. You show me where all them lines are. I tell these game department guys mm -hmm. that, why don't you get out of that damn pickup truck? Man? You know, when why I started hunting come and with ride with me, if you learn anything, <clears throat> you'll get to see some country and get the, you know. I mean, it should be part of their requirement, mm -hmm. you know, to contact the local, you know, whatever. You learn the country you know, and get out and about. Well, you'd think, you'd think, but, you know. And I imagine if they wanted to do it bad enough, they could. Yeah. Just like anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you know, if they wanted to, you know, somebody got a hold of you down there in the Cruces office said, hey, Brett, man, you know. Yeah, come I'm on. I'm sure you'd, you'd say, come, come on, on, man. Let's go look. You'd even Let's bring an extra up. tortilla for them. Mm -hmm. With some yeah. peanut butter. Yeah. Well, I always heard about yeah. Mike. <laughs> I said all you need is a jar of peanut butter. I, I, I told him one day. I said, one guy. I said, what what do we need? Just a peanut butter? And he looked at me and he said, and a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one guy said that. He, I said, you got we got some peanut butter. And he said, what you got? Go with that peanut butter. I looked and there was nothing. I said, a spoon. <laughs> a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good for you. See, if you don't catch them guys, nothing. And they go home, and they're bummed out, you know. They paid money, and they expect something, and they go home empty-handed. And they walk in the door, you know, and you've been kind of cutting them back on the chow. <laughs> they walk in the door, and they gain the notch or two on their belt, and their, their wife, she don't give a rat about their trophy anyway. She, <laughs> she's only happy if you're happy, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you walk in, she goes, Ah, oh, honey, ah, oh, you lost some weight. Well, the hell, you might have caught the biggest Tom in the country. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. So I, I tell them it's a win-win deal, man. Either you you catch one, if you even go home empty, you, you're going to... No, I, I talked yeah. to a guy one time who had hunted with you, and I got a theory about this, and I was going to ask you. He said, your law would be hunting with Mike and be riding down through there, and the dogs are trailing a little bit here and there. And said, just stop, Mike. Say, said, let's build a fire right here and have a cup of coffee. Yeah. And I thought, you know why Mike's doing that? I thought in my head why you're doing that is just to be patient. To give the dogs time, or did you just really want a cup of coffee? Well, I don't know. Uh, the thing about it is, you know, if eh, I mean, you know, your dogs, and it, you know, and you got, um, you're not doing, you know, you think, well, I got it in my head, I'm going over here, and we're not gonna. Let's just stop here. Yeah. You know, just slow let down. these dogs. Yeah, slow yeah, down. yeah, just say, you know, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. line we caught down there. That's this. I mean, I look back on all the mistakes that I probably made. By calling the dogs off when I was probably closer to that lion than I realized. Yeah, yeah. I'm Could sure you, everybody, we've all, you know, yeah, I mean, sure. Those lion, those dogs were just barely poking, poking, right. poking, right. and all of a sudden, bam, there's a lion. That was shocking. Well, what's, I mean, to me, probably the really the neatest thing is when you catch a lion and you don't even jump him. Yeah. And the dog's peck and they peck and you know he's in that rock pile or oh, you don't know you think he's in that rock you pile assume, yeah. maybe he's in that rock pile and then one dog will go to bay and, you know and, and I mean we trailed up to there but we couldn't but it, was, it wasn't a giddy up go track it was a you know peck in you just know pecking and you, where, just where it's hard down. to read it you can't you can't say well I, it's an overnight track you say well maybe how old could it be you know what I mean that kind of you yeah. don't uh, try to read the dogs and then uh, you know me and Homer over in the Caballos uh, that winter, we hunted together, and we took a nap. We were up on a big old rough ridge. And we were hunting afoot, and we took a nap, and we looked down and said, eh, we hadn't been down there. Let's make a loop, and we'll come back to the truck way the hell over there, you know. And uh, so we dropped in there, and the dog started working the track. And it was in the middle of the afternoon. It was in the winter, and it wasn't cold. It wasn't hot, but the dogs, it had to have been a good track. And then we ended up trailing for a couple hours, but we probably didn't go a mile. And they baited, and it was a female. They right. baited under a rock, you know. But they trailed up to there, and they were barely, barely barking. And we were sitting there, you know, where we were a foot, where you could just, oh, you know, and they'd move a little bit, you know. Anyway, they, uh, yeah. But um, 
So that's the funny thing about the scent. You know, it's hard to read it. It's hard to say, well, you know, this is an overnight track, especially in that old dry country. You're not going to, most of the time, you're not ever going to see a track. You just got to rely completely on the dogs, you know. So. Have you ever had dogs that turn a line track around, trail backwards and turn it around on their own? or? Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. That that's. I don't think, I think that's all, you know, part of it. I mean, I think every dog will do that if they got enough under their belt. Would they'll they figure get, it out and they'll say well you know some bitch just said something ain't right you know mm-hmm. what I mean? and they may take a holler from you once or twice and they hear your voice and they go you know if they've worked with you enough or they got enough faith in you they say you know what i think the boss has got it and maybe one old dog comes back you know it starts it and then before you know it another one shows up and another one and here we go you know how about lions walking back over their track for sure all it, the time, all yeah, time. yeah it, it's <clears throat> confusing but that's that's what you got the dog for <clears throat> And, and you know, and if you don't catch them, I always say, well, you, maybe you got a starting point for the next day. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. You, I mean, it, it, it you ain't, telling it, me that one time. Yeah, it ain't a big deal. I mean, it ain't a big deal. Uh, if the dogs will open on it, you know, uh, Homer was pretty. You know, if you find sign, you go back the next day. Don't jump. You know, I mean, even if you get a bark. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? And you think those lines will? I mean, yeah, I mean, you, place it depends on the country you're in. Yeah. You know. Mm. Mm. But I think the thing is, there's probably no consistency, no two tracks alike, line hunting. I think that's what makes it different than everything, Every everything else. You know, bear, you can kind of pattern them sometimes, and sometimes, you know, you know where to go look for them. Lines, you just never know, you know, where you may find one. You, they've got to travel routes, but you may find that track a half mile before you get to the travel route. They'll travel route. I'm 65. I hope I can do it as long as you're doing it. I tell guys that, you know. I, well, I want to sl- slowing down, Mike. I tell you what, All last right. winter I, I caught three lines that I couldn't get to. <clears throat> if I can't ride my mule to them, I don't get there, Mike. I just don't trust myself off walking. Mm-hmm. My knees and my feet and everything, and mm-hmm. wobble around. Well, that and if you're by yourself, exactly. That's ten times tougher. Hunting by yourself is a lot harder. Because you got nobody staying along with you, saying, oh, let's go, yeah. let's go. <clears throat> you got to tell yourself to go, and that's hard to do. And I want to live to do it again, Mike. <laughs> now, the ones I can ride my mule to, I see them and get a picture, and that's all I want, you know, is a yep. picture. Yeah, that, hey, you know, whatever. Uh, I caught some there on the river, yep. the three on the river this last winter, and uh, got pictures of them in them thickets, and crawl on your hands and knees <laughs> into them thickets. To right. get a line picture. Now, that ain't very smart, is it, Mike? Well, they got the dog, so, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> you take a pack mule a lot of times when you hunt? Pretty much. Pretty much, just in case, carry gear for yeah. everybody when you're guiding hunters and stuff? Yeah, it's just too handy. They're a pain in the butt, but they're they're worth it. Are they? They pay off, you know. Well, it's got to stay out. What, uh... And you just now got shock collars. You haven't had shock collars, have you? No, I haven't. You got That's what I mean. I, I I don't know how I did it. I, I've had more wrecks. And I tell everybody, <laughs> and, unless you caught everything there is available to catch with a hound, you haven't hunted. That's true, Mike. <laughs> Before you catch I a I mean, <laughs> from damn lizards to turkeys, you know? <laughs> How about bobcats? You ever catch many bobcats? Not many, but I've caught them. Have you ever had a dog that just kind of was good at that, had a knack at it? Or? Yeah, yeah. I've had a couple like that, but, um, you know, most of the time you catch a bobcat in this country, conditions got to be pretty good. And, and you know, we had one winter, it's probably been 15 years ago, and uh, it snowed in October on the, on the second rifle elk hunt, like six, eight inches. And then it got warm and, you know, went in the ground and froze and kind of, I forget exactly, but anyway, that month of December, like, you know, you don't catch them much. I, I caught maybe like four bobcats and I'd hit them and I'd trail them. Usually, you know, unless there was a fresh snow, you wouldn't trail a bobcat. You You'd get a couple barks and it'd, it'd be over there on that hill and pretty soon it'd fizzle out. Right. You'd let them go, and, but that fizzle. But they take it on, and I really think it was that that ground was heaving up, and that scent was holding something. I mean, I, I don't know. How about foxes? Oh yeah, caught up shit, you know, ton of them, ton of them. How, do you not? You don't? 
reprimand your dogs for running foxes? Well, yeah. What do you do? You know, you call them off, get them off. Let's go. Yeah, that's all you they don't can run do. Very far. I don't shoot them or nothing because you know that old saying. You know, if you ever shoot anything that you don't want a dog, to, you know, that's not a good thing. No, it's what's that? Them bird hunters say it's like shooting a, a rabbit in front of a bird dog. Just don't do it. Just don't do it, you know. I've had guys, you know, dogs put a javelina in a hole or something, you know. And then shoot it? Want, no, want to shoot it. I said, oh, bullshit, no. you ain't shooting that damn yeah. thing, you know. You told you know. me one time, Mike, you caught five lines one day, didn't you? Yeah. Back over here in the, yeah, well, but it was a mama and kittens, though. Well, they, yeah. they, a line's a line, though, and Well, yeah. Different what, what, it, what it was, and I'm sure it's happened probably to you, is two litters went together. I, I don't know if I told you that. No, tell her, tell the story here again. So Brett hadn't heard it. I hadn't heard it. <clears throat> well, uh, anyway, you, uh, you turned out, and the, the time you got your meal out of the trailer. Yeah, I had a guy, I had a father and a son, and we were getting the saddles. You know, I, they they were already saddled, unloaded them, putting the stuff on, and and I had led some dogs out. You know, just go on, and and pretty soon it barked down there. Then I heard an old dog. You know, you know, and. The, you know, getting ready, getting ready, and pretty soon they're treed. You know, I go, ah, you know. Like you say, you know, you never say for sure, you know. Probably a fox, you know. <laughs> Who knows, you know, right? <laughs> so go down there, and they got a little kitten. So we pull the dogs on. Old dogs trail across the king, go up the other side. There was a fox. Fresh kill right there. Like or lying to kill the fox. Uh, well, I don't know, but I, I'm sure it was, but it wasn't even covered up. It was fresh... I mean, ripped open right there. Right there. Like this, this something ain't something ain't right. So the dogs trail up over the rim, and I figure, well, they're either going to catch a kitten or maybe catch the mama. You know, let's go. What do we do? We follow them. We get up there, and they turn it west and they're traveling the rim. And we get by the time we get up there, they're out of hearing. You know, and we keep going pretty pretty soon up there a ways. They're tree down on the bottom, but they're treed in different spots. You know. So we ride down in there, and I get to the tree, and it's a, a big kitten, like 60 pounds, you know. I thought, this ain't the same litter. It can't be, the, the little one. Anyway, they had, they had, I think, four lions along there, different spots. And I tried to get the hunter. One was a tom, you could tell. He, he was probably 75 pounds, and I, the hunter wouldn't shoot him. Oh, he didn't want he did, Yeah, he said he wasn't big enough. You know, and I got that hunter up in the tree. He had it. This was before the iPhone. And I said, well, let me get a picture of you pulling that tail. You know? <laughs> so he climbed up in there, and there was a pinion, you know, and he got, he got right underneath it. And that lion just kept looking at him, you know. I said, grab him. Pull his, you know, I got a picture of you, you know. <laughs> he goes, you sure? I go, closer. Get up there. Get up there. He gets up there, and he got about three inches from that tail. He goes, I can't do it, Mike. I can't do it. <laughs> and I just kind of, you know. I had a guy a couple of years ago up here who wanted to kill a lion with a knife. Oh, oh geez. And I told him, and when he talked to me on the phone, I said, you've watched too many damn movies. <laughs> you know. I said, but, but bring a gun, I said, too. You know. <laughs> so anyway, we treated this, we bait this lion on a bluff, and I climbed up there to it, and I broke off a yucca stock, and I speared this lion with this yucca stock just to get him off the bluff, to get him down off in the canyon, and there's some cottonwood trees, and I thought I could put him in a cottonwood tree. And then I get this guy up there to, to play Zorro, you know, and just go, you know, <laughs> you know, go ahead and stick him. And watch him get the shit slapped out of him. You know, <laughs> anybody that dumb, you can't help but want to, you know. <laughs> he was he was a fireman from Fairbanks, Alaska. Anyway, the hell of it was. Uh, so I got up close to this lion and I speared him with a yucca stock, and he went along these ledges. I couldn't see him. And I'd look over the edge, and this guy was down on the bottom with the with the mules, you know. And it's probably a, it's a long way down, you know, maybe a hundred feet or so. And um, pretty soon, an old dog. They were they were just scattered out all over these rocks. Dogs barking, and I slid along that edge. I couldn't find that lion, you know. And pretty soon, I heard rocks, and I watched one of my old dogs dog paddling in the air over top of me. Oh man! Oh. Man, he watched, and he went. I say fifty feet. It hit an outcropping, landed right on his back, and it shot him. When he hit so hard, it shot him off into the canyon. And there was like willows, and the creek was down there. And uh, and I just heard a, and you know, your heart sinks. You know, you go, damn it, I lost a dog. Damn it, damn it, damn it. You know. So then I was, I was mad. I told that hunter, the hell with the knife. I said, get the rifle, shoot the lion. 
sure. I want to find my dog, you know. So, and I, and I started yelling at him. I said, get the dog, get the dog. And, and he disappeared. I was on a sheer edge. He disappeared in the brush way down there. And he came back out and looked up at me and he said, I can't catch him. <laughs> and, I, and I thought to myself, what the hell is he talking about? It would, it, it, you know, the dog's got to be crippled at least, you know. And pretty soon I see the dog walk out behind him. I'm not kidding. I was like, ah! So I knew I said, shoot him. He had a pistol. He started shooting. Anyway, he ended up getting the lion off, you know. And anyway, killed the lion. And, but the dog, uh, I never had to pack him back. He was fine. Didn't break nothing. How can that be? Yeah, I don't know. But I, I had to, I mean, I seen it. I mean, it, it happened. Didn't you have to go in and get some climbers one time, get a dog off a bluff or something? Or Yeah, yeah. I've done that before. I mean, I had to leave dogs overnight yeah. and rappel down to them. You know, yeah, get and get him out and tie him to a rope and lower him down, you know. Yeah. Mm. Or pull him back up. But, yeah, you hunt the bluffs, that's say, hey, you know. The bluffs are scary. And the older we get, Jim, uh -huh. right? That's right. I mean, you know, I had one up here last a couple years ago, and uh, I had a tie-off to, to... I had a dog get hung in the bluffs down below and couldn't get down. And we had caught the line the day before, and the only reason we caught it was you lucked out. But anyway, we... We caught it, and but this dog was hung up. And where they jumped it out of these bluffs and went down, how the other dogs got off of there without getting hurt, I don't know how they did. But it was just, you know, bad bluffs. But this one dog was hung. It's that same dog who's sick right now. And, and uh, anyway, uh, so that I went back to the house. And the next morning, went over there, climbed up. And there was no trees to tie to, nothing, just ball. So I threw that rope around a big old boulder, you know, figured, ah, it's going to have to do, you know. And I started sliding off of there, you know, going down to that dog. And I remember thinking to myself, why do I do this shit? Why do I do this? One of these days, I tell everybody, if I ever fall, I'm going to turn it into a swan dive, you know. Yeah. Just kiss in, you know. Yeah. Bam! You know? you know. But, yeah, that's the fun of it, though, because, uh, you know. You never know. Yeah, if it, if it wasn't, you know, I tell everybody, if it was easy, there wouldn't be no lines left. No, yeah. They'd have been killed weird. off 100 years ago. Almost like Orville used. To, Orville told me one time. He said they ought to, they ought to make it illegal to hunt in the snow from October to, to yeah, to what, yeah. He, he or something like he that. He didn't like snow hunters, but you know, I know, I know, but you know, okay. there's got to be more lions today, I guess. Don't you think, Jim, or no? Well, I think they're more dispersed, Mike. I ain't gonna say that there's any more. I tell you, when I first started hunting, you know, we never even went to this low country. We probably drove by lions. But I hunt, started hunting with a guy, and we went to the highest ridges on the mountain, you know, and looked yeah. for a scrape. That's where the lines seemed to be. There was deer up high. Now, what we don't have anymore is we don't have the high elevation deer in our country. They're out in these desert foothills. And you think uh, it, that takes the lions down there, too? Exactly. They When when they disperse off the mountains, now I think they begin to get harder to find. they got more country. And... I started hunting with an old man. He wasn't the greatest flying hunter in the world, but he'd hunt a lot with Orville, a lot with Orville. And well, I think he, there's lions everywhere. Yeah, they are. That's they're what I'm everywhere. saying. They're, yeah, they've dispersed everywhere. everywhere. He he told me one time, he talked real funny like this. He said, Jimmy, I want to tell you something. When they say there's a lot of lions, there ain't very damn many. And there's a lot of truth in that, yeah. you know. There's you, never a lot of lions. Never a lot of lions. What's no. a lot? You can't put in the Oh, you them. know, you can go over here and, you know catch a tom and catch a female and say she's got some big old kittens in there with her still you know dragging yeah. with her and you catch them and you know and that's a lot of lions take but, one or two out of an area and you're, you're out of lines if you know for a while. what uh how long like your longest hunt i mean the after one lion i mean have you have you like stayed after one for two or three days or have you ever done that I, I i yes i have done that and and uh but i don't know how many times but i've sure done it um didn't you tell me one time you trailed a tom from this the entire length of the black range you well, just about and i ended up uh, up here yeah uh, and i lost the dogs and and i uh, and i wish i would have had gps's i guess then but anyway yeah you started yeah. way down there at cook's peak or something not that far down but down there by emory pass yeah mm -hmm. And came all the way up to here. Yeah. Ended up. Yeah, that's the thing about a pack mule, though. It don't matter where you go, you know. It don't matter where you... That's the thing about this country. You got a lot of elbow room. And the San Mateos are the same way. Yeah. You know, that country up there. You know, I think from the west side, you, there are a lot of roads. But this uh, east side, yeah. man, you're you're on your own. Really? Yeah, it's just... 
you know, and and now this fire up on top, there ain't no telling. We get any big rains, what that's going to do to them canyons off this side. It's going to cut them deeper than yeah. what they already are. Is know? it hard to get around up there? It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's just, it, To me, it's a lot rougher than the Black Range. Oh, really? To me, it is. Rougher than back where my camp used to be? Oh, for there? sure. For really? sure. No, this 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 interstate side, it's, it's you know, there's just a... It, and the canyons just are, seem deeper. They're a lot higher climbing, you know. Than, see, maybe the Black Range are already up there, it seems like, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I say that. I don't know. But it just seems like this country here, it's, it's you know. Yeah, you'll have to go up there sometime and, and hunt. I've invited you know, him. I'm going to come this winter, man. You know, I, it, you know it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rock pile. That's, you know, that's I always told everybody, you know, there where I was by my camp. You know, I never... There was nobody ever came up there and hunted, mm-hmm. and I had guys say, "Oh, you know, we come up there and they come up there one time, you know, and that'd yeah. be about it." Cause right, right. I had there right. was a TV crew one time that they wanted to bring a guy. I, I think it was this boy that lives over here now. I don't want to say his name, but they said, "Yeah, we're gonna we want to come in there and go bear hunting because they closed down the 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 area. They hit the quota over there by Capitan and oh, Reno okay. and everything. And we got a TV crew trying to make a film and and." want to come in there and i said well you better bring your mules you know and i said i'll you know i'll go with you and we'll yeah i know the country fairly well and, and they they said well we want to do we want to rig we want to rig you know yeah. and i said well i said you can rig there's a road it's about eight miles long i said you come in and then you turn around <laughs> yeah and if you you can on, do that all day long <laughs> if you really drive want up to. and down that that's about it yeah. i never heard from them again right <laughs> right but yeah a lot of those guys just went you know and it's I'm sure it's the same over there, up there. If you don't spend a lot of time in the country, you don't know how to get around. And I remember I had a guy, and we were up there in the Black Range. We hunted like 10 days. We didn't catch nothing. And we were coming back out, and we were getting snowed on. We were in a bunch of brushy, old, nasty stuff up high, and we had a long way to go. And I turned around, and I said, Man, damn, piece of apple pie and a cup of coffee would hit the spot now, wouldn't it? And, and he goes, What are you talking about? I said, hell, man. I said, use your imagination. He said, after 10 days of this, I don't have an imagination. <laughs> <laughs> he was tired. And I got my fell out of the saddle laughing, you know. Didn't you, didn't you tell me on 100 you took Mike, you hunted him 42 days? No, no. Well, he's the record. I got one guy uh, uh, from not Louisiana. Continuous. Not continuous. Not continuous, but he every time he'd come, we just never could make it happen. And he'd leave, and you'd catch a line. Yeah, yeah. he'd leave, and I, and I ended up sending him. Say, he said, listen, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> if you catch I don't want to hear about it, you know. We'd be on the one, and then he'd have to go home. You know what I mean? I'd get somebody else, and we'd get lucky and get get it caught or something like that. He'd hunt with you like five or six days at a time? Or oh, yeah, or, or sometimes ten even, yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, this, you know, this, you hear these stories about these guys saying, yeah, I've caught a line for every hunter I've ever taken. I go, man, what kind of drugs do they take? <laughs> you know? <laughs> to say crap like that. I mean, maybe there's other country that you can do that to, but, you know. No, this country here, you got you to gotta, you gotta just like Be lucky. You told me one time, yeah. Mike, when you catch a line, you're just damn lucky. Yeah. Remember that? Well, Homer's the one who used to tell me that all the time. Oh. He said, if a guy's honest with himself, every line you catch, you, you look back on it and retract yourself, you'll say you're lucky. Just yeah. lucky, yeah. That's right. And, you know, there's, see, I, I'm all for it. I, I'm, you know. What, have, you, have you ever been scared or hurt while you're out there? Or, no. Or? No, I've never been. I've been knock on wood. Okay. But, Warner Glenn had the best, the best answer to that question I ever heard. They asked him, he said, have you ever been scared out there? And he sat there for a minute and thought, and he said, I scared I wasn't going to catch that lion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's about right. Yeah, yeah. And well, sometimes that church plays with you because you got a guy you just like to, you know, some guys are great. But most of the most of the guys are, are good, but, you know, you get the guys that, you know, which way are we going tomorrow, you know? You're tired of hearing that stuff, you know? Which way? What do you? Where, what's the plan for tomorrow? Well, we're gonna go hunt. You know, <laughs> you know. Just well, you know, like you got a crystal like? ball, like you got a crystal ball. You yeah. know. I think yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it's just it's, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Don't you agree, Mike? That some country is just easier to catch them in than others. You know, like Pat Wantland was telling me a story that he was camped over there in some mountain range in Arizona, 
And Dale Lee and Giles Gosling both showed up at his camp one evening. And they were sitting around there drinking coffee and I'm sure a little whiskey. And Dale asked him, said, Have you, are you catching anything here? Pat? And Pat said, no, but I'm trailing something every day. And he said, Giles and Dale got to talk, and they had never caught a lion in that particular mountain. And they came up with this funny story that Dale thought the bluffs were too close together. You jump them out of one, they just go get in another bluff, in other words. They had, and Pat said it seemed to be that way. You could trail and trail, but you could right. never get one caught, never get him caught. Well, the only country I've seen like that around here, and I've jumped them and had to get away, but never seen them in front of the dogs. But, I mean, they were right there. It was in the Floridas. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. I used to hunt the Floridas quite a bit, and I've never caught, I've never baited a lion. I mean, I've had Ibex kills that were fresh, and the dogs barking off into the air, and on bluffs all right there, and you know that lion's right there. Yeah. And you can't find them. And you can't get down to find them. Right. You can't, you know, slither down there on a ledge and, you know, look in the holes and stuff. But, um, you know, I, I think you catch a lion just about anywhere, but they're, like I say, places like that and that mountain you're talking about with him, it may have been the same kind of deal. Yeah. You know, um you know, the track's everything. How close are you to that lion? You know? uh, Otis had a pretty good pretty good story. He was up here in the Wahoos, and he had a hunter, and they were they were riding along, you know, and come about lunchtime, and a little, a little rocky outcropping down there, you know, right, let's have lunch. They got off, and he said, just as they got off, a damn dog fight started right there, he said. I thought, what the hell? I ran over there and damn, that lion went up a tree. They had a lion on the ground. We got off our mules and there was a lion laying under that bluff right there. And the dogs just, you know, bah! There they are. And put it up. And the fight was on them and put it up a tree right there. It's like, what's the chances of that? Yeah. Talk about a hot track. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. You know? But. You told me a story one time about up here that you had a hunter and there was a little bit of snow on the slope and this mule sliding down or something and I forget what it was and I thought you guys had a lion tree down there somewhere and yeah I, I thought know. you said you never been scared when I heard that story oh I, no I, I, I told you that story yeah 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 no I got the lion uh, the mules down on the bottom and it was it was after a burn up there it, burn had been several years before but. And, and there was no snow on that side, but it was frozen and it was all burned. It was all that locust, you know, oh. that old prickly old cat claw stuff, you know. And I said, I'll just get to the bottom. I said, you drag the lion on down. Okay, okay. So I started off and I had his mule and I had a pack mule and my mule. I might have had two pack mules. I feel like saying I did. But anyway, I started leading off of there. And that ground, it was really steep. But not only that, it was frozen rock. Hard, I mean, just like rock. And I kept slipping and sliding, and I started down. There was no turning back up. I said, "Man, we got I gotta just keep going." I got down to the bottom. Well, that after that fire, when that water came in the summer rains, it cut, and I had a bank higher than that roof right there, a lot higher, like high as this damn tree to the bottom of the creek, and there was no going up. And you I, were there. I was dead in the water. I went. I I, I thought, what am I going to do? And I went up. I turned every mule loose. Um, you know, I figured, and I took the mule I was riding, and I jumped off, and I knew I could get that mule off behind me, and that mule jumped. I never seen it jump, but it jumped, and I figured it was going to land on me, and I, when I hit, I rolled, and I rolled into a, a pool of water down there, and that mule hit behind me, and I got out of the water, and I and I did that with every mule. I had one mule that rolled underneath with a with a pack on, rolled underneath a damn burned big old dead log under a deadfall. And and she, she was squatted. I mean, I, I I was gonna shoot her and myself. <laughs> no, really. Are you getting some of them pinches? You just go. What is the answer to this? Well, what yeah, is the right. answer? I don't know the answer. You know. Well, what should I? You know. Whatever you do is going to be wrong. You know. Mm. Yeah. 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 Probably one of the probably the probably it probably was one of the worst days I've ever had hunting with a hound. I put this line in a mine shaft up here. I had this old guy with a muzzle loader, and we lost the dogs. I didn't have no, you know, tracking stuff. And we on a good trail, followed him, followed him, followed him, and we came off into this damn deal, and it was quiet. Couldn't hear a dog. 
and we weren't that far behind them. I figured they just made a bad lose, you know. Nothing, nothing. I said, this is weird. I said, I, I, the, the mine shaft, I wouldn't, it wasn't even in my mind. I just thought the dogs had made a lose. And I mean, we waited a while, nothing. We got off down in there, nothing. And we're on one side of the canyon, maybe the other side was, you know, back across there in a cut was maybe a couple hundred yards. And a dog hit, must have come out of that and barked. And we heard that dog right there. <laughs> said, hell, they're right over there. Got over there, and man, they had this lion back in this. It wasn't that deep. It was probably only from here to that far post. And it was a big boulder in front of it, and it was just like somebody had put it there, whatever, and you could get back in this hole. Anyway, uh, I didn't have a flashlight, and I crawled in there, and <laughs> the noise was deafening. You know, them lions. I probably had six, seven dogs, I don't know. And they had this lion bait in there, and they was just, and I crawled in there. I, I didn't get much from me to you, and I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. And I'm and I'm squatted there, and 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 I had to squat down to crawl in, and and uh, I, I remember I had my 45 in my hand, and I was kneeling down, and I'm thinking, and the noise is deafening. When we got there, the hunter said, "Mike, this is your deal. I, I ain't going in there." You know, <laughs> you know? And so so uh, so uh, I got, and I'm thinking to myself, how do I get these dogs out? I mean, it is so you can't even hear yourself think. You can imagine the the the, the, the noise of them bait. and I didn't have a flashlight, and I couldn't see. And I'm just thinking, How do I, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? You know? And I thought, nothing. I try to call them off. What do you? You know? I'm kind of like here, dogs here. Well, that was the worst thing in the world. <laughs> and all that they did up. is they just piled on it, and the fight, and it lasted probably three seconds, ten seconds. And I'll never forget, I sit just like this, and I just seen eyes, like right there, boom. And and it was a female, and she had to go right over the top of me because there was no room. And when she got right on me like this, I fired two rounds, boom, boom, just like that. And I am not joking, that lion collapsed on me, God, lay, right on. laid on me, okay? Wow. But my second shot, no, it was my third shot, I went boom, boom. And I thought it was maybe still alive. I went, boom! I had a little old dog, little walker dog. She was a little Cracker Jack. She had come running up. And I shot her right in the back of the head. Ooh. And the, and the last shot. And I probably didn't, the lion was probably already dead with the first two, but I didn't know that. You didn't know. She was laying on you. And, and, and I shot her, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe I shot my dog. You know. Anyway, I came out of the hole. The hunter was like, what? Well, you know, I said, I shot my dog. I shot my dog. I said, this is, this is, you know, you want to quit, you know. Yeah. Stuff like that. But, um, but yeah, then, then we, I pulled the lion out and, uh, waiting for the dogs to come out one at a time. No dogs. And I'm thinking, now what can be wrong? What can be wrong? <laughs> so I crawl back in there. I go, here dogs, here dogs, you know. Pretty soon, here come a dog, you know. Here come a They had bait that line on a rat nest. And you know how all that choya. Yeah. And oh. them dogs were covered in choya. And the lion, when I went to drag it, it bit me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was full of choya. <clears throat> and them dogs were all just slow coming out because they were full of choya, yeah. you know. And I, we sat there and pulled all the choya out of all the dogs. But, but anyway, <clears throat> yeah. But yeah. That 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 was a uh, you know yeah, yeah. But, but hey things like that happen. Yep. I've heard stories of guys. I've lost a couple dogs off of bluffs, but never a bunch of dogs. And, and I wonder what the you know what the I hate to say record, but I wonder how many have ever went off on one hunt. You know what's the old boy there in uh, down in Arizona the that hunted the Armendaris. Uh, wrote the book. Yeah, John Keebler. Keebler. Yeah. yeah, he lost like four dogs, I think, once off of a off of a bluff. I heard. I don't know how you you know. I guess you just keep going, but that'd be a. I don't know. I, I, that would be much tougher than that. I watched a video that a guy had of losing one dog, but the way he did it was terrible. The the dog was sitting there baying the lion, you know, about that far from yeah. his face. And yeah. The lion grabbed the dog, and they went. They both went off the bluff, the lion and the and the yeah. dog. Yeah. Billy Jack told me the story about when he hunted the big hatchets, they had that line in that, I guess that face you were talking about. 
and he said that was a sad deal. That one good dog was out there, and he jumped to get back up yeah. on the ledge. He told he me hung, that story. Hung there like that, and he couldn't power himself up. Yeah. And he went like sixty he, feet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me he was he was ready to quit then. Yeah. Yeah. He said I remember talking to him, and he said he. And matter of fact, he said he wouldn't hunt that mountain anymore. Right. He'd never be. He'd never go down there. Again. Huh, you know. Whatever. I don't know. Have, I don't you, know, you, know. have you ever had a lion just turn around and kill a dog? Nope. Never have. No. Bears, though. I've only had them, you know, whatever you want to call it, defending themselves, you know. And and the thing is, just like me telling the dogs, you know, here, dog, you know, and and they got them on the edge of a bluff, and here we come crawling up. And them dogs turn and look and see us, all of a sudden they're two foot closer. They're tougher, yeah. You know, um, I had a dog up here get knocked off a bluff, and I watched it get knocked off, and and I thought it was dead, and I took it to the vet, and, and, and it ruined her. It broke. He put her hip back in or whatever and put her in some kind of deal, but she couldn't hunt the rest of the winter, then she never was the same. Never was the same. Never was the same. Didn't you have a line over here by Alamogordo over there that went off a bluff, and you had to go around? And uh, go? Yeah, 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 over there in that dog canyon, big old nasty. I mean, you've probably seen that country over there. That, mm-hmm. You know, it's up there by the antennas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're bad bluffs. I mean, you over could, there on on by Alamo, above Alamogordo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could parachute off them bluffs. Yeah, I mean, you that, could. I, I, uh, Mike Benzi had a dog that I had, I had given him, that was making a good line hound. She, they caught a big, big tom off of there, and uh, that dog came off the bluff right there and, and killed yeah. him. It doesn't surprise me. Them are they're bad bluffs. Yeah, yeah. The dogs had one bait, and we were gunning down to it, and the dog looked up and seen us, and lions jumped over the dogs, and then went along a rim, disappeared. And we got over there along that rim, and on this side it was just a sheer wall, and I knew that lion didn't go up there, you know, and and uh, the dogs were all looking for the lion, you know, and 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 we looked, and that yeah, there was a crack, and he he was looking at it, and I told that hunter without even a, before a dog could even see that lion, I said shh. Oh. He blew him off. He said he heard him hit. I didn't hear him hit. And I marked it with some paper, you know, up there on Achoya. And I looked down there. You could see Highway 54 going down there towards El Paso, you know. And uh, and, and I could see a two-track way down there coming up this canyon. So I kind of marked everything. And the next day we came back around. We hiked up there. We got up there about, really about one one thirty in the afternoon, I remember. And I went up a little higher, and I said, this is it. This is it. I said, you know, let's split up. I said, you're down here. I'm going to get a little higher, and let's just skirt underneath this bluff. And I was walking along, not very long, and it looked like a boulder had come off, fresh dirt. You know. And I said, I don't know what hit here, but something hit. By the time I said it, this hunter goes, here he is, Mike. And that lion had hit and then bounced. And that lion had splits down him. And I thought he was ruined, and he said, "No, my taxidermist can fix it." And he sent me pictures, and come out okay. He did, he did. Mm-hmm. But um, but I could see over there where oh, if you ever had a dog off a bluff, it's over. Done. Now that that there were really bad bluffs over there, yeah. really bad bluffs. Yeah. I mean, any bluff that over fifty feet kill a dog, I guess. Yeah. So it don't matter. Have you hunted up north? Have you know? Not really. No, no. I, I've been up there. I had a buddy up there in Las Vegas, New Mexico, an old Mexican guy, good son of a gun, and I'd go up there and hunt, and and the biggest line I ever caught was up there. Really? Yeah. yeah. Arizona? You were hunting Arizona? Or? Oh, yeah, I hunted in Arizona. I never caught nothing, though. I always go over there to see, we used to have a spring bear season. Oh, yeah. And when they closed it, and you know, you had the month of April, you couldn't do nothing. March, the lion season ended the 31st of March. So... I'd go to Arizona, and before you know it, you know, it'd be too damn hot, and the bears would be out. And anyway. How about when you ran bears? Did you ever have any trouble running lions with dogs that you caught bears with? Running boats, running boats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably only because, you know, if you're hunting and the bears are real active, and you hit a, you they're go over a, a bear track, and your dogs are used to catching bears, they're going to leave. Yeah, they're gonna go on the bear. Now you might have a dog or two to stay in the line. It just depends how hard the line track is. Yeah, you know if the line track ain't that good and they hit a fresh bear, boom. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. Huh, Jim? That's the way it is. The way it is. I mean, if now these guys now there a lot of guys go well. I won't let my dog run a run a bear. Well, that's fine. I mean, I, like I say, you know, you do it for a living. I mean, I take bear hunters because, you know, I mean, 
So help, when you help, help feed the dogs. Never had much trouble with the dog slowing down to trail a bear or trail a lion after running bears. I don't think so. I mean, you know, I, I just I, I've heard that a lot of times too from a lot of guys. You know, that you know a bear dog will be too fast and he won't slow down on a lion track. But you get experienced dogs with lions under their belt when they hit a track and they don't want to leave it. Yeah, they're gonna pound on it. Yeah, you know. Uh, if it's a giddy up go track, it's one thing, but most of the time it ain't that way. You know, I told old Sid Savage, he's hunting with me a little this last winter. I said, Sid, you're never going to catch a lion. <laughs> he goes, Why you say that, Mike? <laughs> I said, Because you ride too damn fast. I said, You got, he's always bragging on his mule. He, he'll, he'll, he'll watch it. He'll give me help. <laughs> he'll give me help. Yeah, he, he said, Watch my mule. He got. You know. Boy, we'll walk. Yeah, out walk. well, that's all well and good, you know. But I mean, at the end of the day, I guess heading home, it's nice. Yeah. But I told him the same thing when we were hunting up there. He, I said, "That gum, Sid. Slow down. Said, slow down. Enjoy some of this." Yeah. He, 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 well, what about over there? What about over there? Let's go. <laughs> say, hey. He's like a fart in a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's he's used to that roping. He's all yeah. quick. Yeah. Timing everything. <laughs> You know, happen, you know I've got a saying about these hounds. I say, there's two things: slow, stay, slow down, and stay out of their way. Yeah. That's my two things. I tell a young boy, and he, he's always that pushing up. I said, stay back from them. Give them time. Let yeah. them figure it out. You stay out of their way because you can push it. You can Don't. keep pushing the dog, riding up on him. Yeah. You can push him off that track. Yeah. Best let... dog I ever had was a little female. <clears throat> And I've actually seen her be going up a canyon, and I'd get too close to her, and that track would turn around and come back. She'd trail right underneath and you my were mule. in the way. And I was in the way. Yeah. So anymore, when I'm in the mountains, if they're going up the canyon, I'm side healing. If right. they're side healing, I'm in the canyon, you know. Right, right. I just stay out of the way and give them a lot of time. Right. Just tie up. Jimmer, I got a friend over at Captain. Jimmer is notorious. He'll get off his mule and go get his cantina out, or coffee out. And he drinks tea, and he's got to have his tea. And he says a lot of times, if you'll just get back to them dogs, they'll they'll turn it around. They'll he calls it, it inching it back. He says they'll inch it back. Sure, sure, just, sure. Just, just get down right there and build you a couple yeah, of times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Um, but, you know, it's a game I think nobody's got the answer to. You know, you get a lot of opinions, and like we're here, we're all... And that's the reason we do it, because yeah. you never have the answer to that. No, it's like every, 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 every day is a new day. Yeah. Every day, and then every track is yeah. different. This is, and the hell of it is, the probably the biggest thing is, like me and Billy talk all the time, say, it's all the dogs. Yeah. If you yeah. couldn't right. watch that dog exactly. work, you know, especially, you know, watching a pup make a dog. Yeah. That's that's probably the biggest reward. Right. Is making a young dog. I mean, you know, watching, watching a young dog turn into a good dog. Yeah. You know. And well, coming into the evening, and you trail the line, and they've did work their heart out, and they're sl- strung out for a quarter mile mile behind you, like a bunch of galley slaves. You know that to me that gives me yeah. more satisfaction oh, than yeah. if I caught the biggest tom on the mountain. Right. 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 Oh yeah. You know, and that's yeah. that's but, one of the reasons I. I Everybody has, or not everybody, so many people have the wrong impression about exactly. what we do. Right. They think that you just take a bunch of screaming dogs out there, dump them on the ground, they run through a canyon and tree a lion. And, and I, you know, I make my little videos and I do my things, and the only thing I show is how those dogs trail. Yeah. And I show how the dogs work and how I don't really know what the hell's going on. Right. <laughs> I'll just... The thing about the dogs, too, you know, <laughs> you hear this stuff, this term, sport hunting, you know. Hunting ain't a sport. It's not a sport. Something you kick a ball. You know, you, you hunt because you know there's no winning and losing. Oh, that's true. You know what I mean? Right. I yeah. mean every day you win. Yeah. The you know, only really. Is when oh you yeah, dog. you lose a dog and that you know bums anybody out. But I'm sure. just saying. But I'm just saying because it it, it it ain't that way and it's hard to uh, it's hard to uh, you know call it. You know what what do you get out of hunting? Well, you just either you either you love it or you know. Yeah. Yeah, now, there's a lot of guys that don't. I've taken guys that don't get anything out of watching that dog go over there. Right. I agree. Marking I, on a track, and to me, that I, yeah, I, I don't always, care if I caught it or not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I always say, if any, if, if you know, you know, 
Anybody who don't like the dog, you know, ought to just be shot. You know, <laughs> I mean, just, I mean, if you, I mean, I don't care what kind of dog, even yeah. you know, the only dogs yeah. I got, I, I don't have a any compassion for or whatever you want to write word is is, you a, know, pit, is a pit bull. And yeah. one of the big, it's the only dog that yeah. I, you know, a, a bird dog, a squirrel dog. A lot of the, a lot of the preconceived ideas too is that we train these dogs to do this and that. It's cruel to the dogs. And I always say, man, it's just like, you know, if a guy wants to, you know, hang glide or anything like that or mountain climb, you know, it's dangerous. But they'd rather do that than, than anything else. And that's the way those dogs are. If you give them a choice, I mean, they want to go hunt. And here's another, here's another thing about the, the way we hunt. You know, riding a horse or a mule and, of course, the dog. But, you know, you're using animals to catch animals. Yeah. And I, and, and I think that's neat, you know. And... Um, you know, no, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, and of course we got our electronic stuff. You know, and it really wouldn't bother me if that if that stuff was never came along. Really, me either. I mean, I, I'm sure. You know, it's <clears throat> now it's getting where you know it's kind of like having your cell phone. I'm looking at it. Yeah, I'm looking at it. You know, and when did I never, you start using telemetry or tracking colors? Uh, just like maybe two, maybe three at the most. Three years, maybe. Three years ago? Probably, yeah. Well, I had telemetry before that. Yeah, but I mean... Yeah. The telemetry, probably, probably seven, eight, ten years. Really? Like, probably a while. The you telemetry. like the Garmin's a lot better? Well, yeah, I mean, because it's, you know... Well, when you. you started, there wasn't nothing around, Mike. When I started, there wasn't nothing. When you went hunting, you got invited by some old man. He took his two best dogs, and he maybe take a pup. And you took your best dog, but you yoked yours to his. And you... He made you make your dog stay behind your mule. I mean, they'd take a rope or a whip or anything. Yeah. And them old two old dogs or one old dog out front, they was a, they called them start dogs. And they had to get the track lined out and going. Because if you jumped off and uncoupled them or unsnapped them, you got your butt chewed out, you know. Because uh, that's just the way we hunted, four dogs. But, I, you know, in a way, I think that's good in the ba- and there's, there's some bad Bad, the bad part is you never trained many young dogs. They were still at home on a chain. The good part was those dogs that did it were what I call more rounded. They could strike, they could trail and tree. Nowadays, we hunt a pack of dogs. I'm yeah. guilty of it. i got better start dogs, I've got better trail dogs, and I've got better tree dogs. Dogs just don't come rounded, 150% this, 50% that. Yeah. Some dogs are better trail dogs and weak tree dogs, weak tree dogs, vice versa. And we compensate by having a whole bunch of them. Back in them old days, some of those old dogs, like you read Dub Evans' book, Old Brown and them, they were rounded dogs. They, they did it all. They yeah. could do it all. They didn't have to have an army behind them, you know. Yeah. And I, people have asked me, and the first time I, re- I asked Wes Henderson about this, Clay's boy, I asked him, I said, he told me, he said, well, we took 13 dogs down here on the, on the Cachillos or someplace and caught a line. And I said, Wes, why do you take 13 dogs? He looked at me for a while, real stupid, and he said, wouldn't you rather have, rather have 13 noses looking for it than two? <laughs> I said, I never thought of it like that. <laughs> why did you take 13? Because we don't have 14. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so much for my... How did do you hunt? How many dogs do you put on the ground at a time, Mike? Do you, do All he's got. Usually. Yeah, not 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 that. Uh, you know, seven or eight. And you split your packs though when you're hunting for somebody. Yeah, and then you know you try to rotate them, and then take another bunch the next day. You know? Rotate every day. Yeah, yeah. Their feet. Mm-hmm. Sound. Yeah, I do. Do you have a preference on your dogs, any particular breed, or anything you really, or if it's just. Tell us about your dogs, Mike. What do you look for? Well, they're all hound. That's all I can say. And other than that, to me, the biggest thing about a hound is giving them the opportunity. You know, like we said, putting in the miles. You know, mm-hmm. you bring it out of a dog. You can take a dog. To me, I tell everybody, if all we had is German Shepherds, we'd catch lions. We just have to hunt harder. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, well, really. I mean, you know, because, I mean, how many dogs? I mean... Uh, yeah, it's uh, just funny. Um, they. Uh, You've been through a lot of dogs that didn't work? That just wouldn't nah, come Nah, not that many, really. When I first started, because they, they knew a lot more than I did, you know. And I'd call a dog, not 
Not giving it enough time, probably. Not giving it, yeah. You know, just being stupid. No, no. I think that's a lot of problem these days. These guys want a dog that's going to cold trail by the time he's nine months old, and, and they don't ever give him a chance. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, you know, you got to bring it out of them. And every dog's got their own character, and, man, some of them, as they get older, that character may be a sleeper for a long time, and right. then... Mm-hmm. Later on, that turning, you know, and that dog disappears. You, you, you say how important that dog was. That you thought was just part of the team. Yeah. Well, really, it was more than just that. You know, and they had the the and you know the old, you know, just like anything, the more experience they got, the more game they got under their belt, the harder they'll stay on a track. When they know what's on the end of that track, you know, I mean. You think you think when you do shoot a lion out to a dog that it really tunes them up a lot more that they get a lot more. I think it. I I don't think. I think you have to do that. I, I know you do, but not every time. Not every time. It you know. I remember, uh, and I've done it. Where them, you know, I'd read where Dale Lee would, you know, they'd catch a lion and they'd, they'd gut it, feed the dogs right with them, the, the guts, yeah. you know, and jump on. Let's go. You know, give the dog a little reward. Yeah, little reward, and let's go. You know, so yeah, yeah. And that's what I think. You and I were talking about Ben Lilly, that you know, he didn't pack a bunch of dog food around with him. He had to, you know, and those dogs probably got a little hungry, and they probably wanted to catch. Yeah, there's a lot of question marks about that old time. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, you know, everything's a legend, you know, and all that. But I mean, some of it just doesn't fit. A lot of stuff, you know, you really have to be there. You know, so yeah. You th- yeah. What do you think about the future of what? I, I think our days are numbered. I do. I, I, you know, it'd be great if I'm wrong. I mean, I, I'd like to be wrong. Sure, don't look good. You know, the whole country as a whole don't look good. You know, and I don't think I don't think we got the gumption for the Civil War, but that's kind of. It's heading that know. way, isn't it? Well, I mean, you know, whatever. We could go on and on, but you know. I say praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. I don't... How much, how's, how's our time doing? Oh, I don't know how long, but it's been good. I know that. I enjoyed the heck out of that. I could have done this without all this camera stuff. Yeah. 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 I would have. Oh, yeah. Mike's an interesting guy. He's been around, I'll say. Well, no more than you, Jim. I mean, well, we, yeah, we, you yeah, know, we, we've all got our it. stories, you know? You've made a living at it, and I didn't have to, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, whatever. I, I've i taken a lot of good people hunting over the years, and I tell everybody I wouldn't have nothing if it wasn't for hunters. I've had hunters give me more damn stuff. I had a hunter a couple of years ago call me, wanted to send his daughter up here and and, and show, him, show her the, how to pack from Texas. She'll never have a use for packing in her whole life. But he just wanted her to learn. And well, he was going to send her up, and then she got sick, and he couldn't. And, and then a week later, I got a $3,000 check in the mail. <whistles> Said, sorry, my daughter couldn't come. Guys like that. That's amazing, isn't it? That's what I mean. Well, yeah. Who taught you how to pack? Uh, just different guys. Different guys. I got to say, uh, you know, I, my, my hat's off to Randy Lindsay. He really, when I first went over there lion hunting years ago, <laughs> he was real big and he, all, he maybe it's different now, but he always tied a double diamond. And, and I got to tie a double diamond and I love it. It's simple. It, it does everything. Maybe there's better hitches, maybe. But anyway, it, it works. It'll, and and, and I, so I can say that and then, uh, you know, different. But that's the hitch I use pretty much. I know there's a whole lot more, but anyway, um, yeah. And you and you do. I mean, you pack for the Forest Service. I have. And you do. Some I have. Packs and stuff. And yeah, yeah. You know, most of that stuff it doesn't really compare to packing with hunters because hunters got all this crap. And, you know. <laughs> well, I gotta tell you, <laughs> you know, we're, Forest Service. I mean, they they, they oh, think they think you're overloading a mule if you put over 150 pounds. You know. <laughs> And you got a hunter, and you're keep throwing the stuff on. <laughs> me, me and Lon were up there at his camp, on on top. Yeah, and we got up there before him, and and. Uh, well, you guys came by. We I was over there by a uh, flagpole, remember? Oh, that's right. And you yeah. wanted to get up on top, and I said, "Man, you guys, the only way you, that I know that's good, we well, got a Rep good trail. Go to Hermosa, go up Morgan. I said, go up through the second set of pins, and that you'll see that trail cut off, and that'll yeah. take you up on top." Asked him, you'll have to. Lead. He said, you'll have to lead right when you get to the top, or you'll have to lead. And I said, where? 
He said, you'll know. Yeah. <laughs> you did? Yeah. 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 We got off on that. I forget. What that one was. edge you go around, that one edge is yeah, kind of, if you if you lost something there, you'd lose it. And then, probably. Uh, it's one bad. One time we were up there and we were camped, right? You, uh, we were camp. We had already set up our camp. No, right and we spot. rode in after dark. And you rode in with that kid and yeah. everything after dark, and all you could see coming up that old rough mountain was those headlamps oh, coming yeah. up through there, and that that's a pretty yeah. rough spot coming yeah, up through there. Yeah, that's yeah. a beautiful camp up there, though. Yeah, it's a nice little spot. Nice. But yeah, um, um, but yeah, I don't know how guys do it without a pack mule because you know the heck of it is, you know, it might be three in the afternoon and you hit a track, mm -hmm. and you know you hate leaving a dog out. And then, I mean, I've left him just as much as anybody, and I hate it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've turned around and said, yeah, you know, and then they're not really working, you know? Right. And they won't come off, though. You know what I mean? Ah, you're going, damn it, what do I do? What do I do, you know? And, and the hunter said, well, how, much, how far is camp? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Camp's going to be where we end up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like Otis said, Why don't you just shut up, fat boy. We met up on this top. That <laughs> Otis, man, he's he's great. He, Llewellyn? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were up there, and we were elk hunting, and, and, and I had another guy helping. We were going to meet up on this knob for lunch, all of us, you know, have a little powwow, see how the morning hunt went, and figure what we are going to do that afternoon, you know. We got up there, and I had this guy, and he, he said he was in, in the Army and Special Forces, and and then I asked him about boot camp. He said he didn't even go to boot camp. He went straight into special forces. Oh. You know? Well, right there is enough to, you know, this guy, I just, uh, I just assume shoot him in the kneecap and leave him, you know. <laughs> but the hell of it is, uh, we get up there, you know, and this guy says, well, let's just eat. And we're waiting on the one guy to show up, this one buddy of mine with a hunter. Let's just wait five more minutes. They'll be up. We'll all eat together. Just relax, you know. Right. And five minutes go by, ten minutes go by, and this guy says, oh, hell, let, let's just go ahead and eat. This is the guy who said he was special forces. And Otis turns around and says, why don't you just shut up, fat boy? <laughs> <laughs> I swear this guy had never been called that in his life. He about, ooh. You know? And I just kind of smirked like, you know, he's my hunter, and, I, I, you know, I'm not supposed to be, you know what I mean? He's a paying client, all this bullshit, you know. But, but, but that's what he needed. He, he was out of line. You I'm going to. I'm speaking of Otis. I'm going to go to Oklahoma, and I talked to Otis, oh, and he wants me to come when he's when it's cooler, so I can go bobcat hunting with him because he's running bobcats over there. And, that's him. And I told him, I said, I said, you, you, will you sit down and let the oh, guys he, do an interview? And he, he said, yeah, some, he'd be a great one. Yeah, he's yeah. got some stories. He, uh, you know, Deb Evans' book. He had a chapter on Blanche, right. one of his dogs. Oh. So I named the dog Blanche. I think I got one out here right now. I've got, I think I've had five Blanches. You, know? yeah. you just keep running out of I just, I, I just keep, you know. That's yeah. like those brownie dogs. Yeah, from, yeah. 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 Brownie yeah. one, brownie two, yeah. Brownie, yeah. Yeah. big brownie. Big yeah. brownie. Yeah. A bunch of brownies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, tell us a story, Mike. You've been silent all this time. Yeah, right, right. Well, I don't know. There's, um, there's, there's lots of them in there, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm about, I'm about out, I guess. Yeah. You taking like any the, famous any famous people hunting? No, nah, not really. I, you know, I've taken uh, uh, Hornady, the bullet maker. Yeah. You know, and and uh, and he's he's a good guy. I took him into Florida first. Really? You talk about some rough old country, and we didn't catch nothing. And then I caught him a, a line in the black range. <clears throat> Whatever. But um, um, then old Jeff Cooper. You've heard of probably Jeff Cooper. Yeah. He was a Pistolero guy, old, oh. old crusty old marine. He used to write in the back of guns and ammo. He's dead and gone, but he, he, he was a neat guy, real neat guy. But he was, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, no, not really. Any advice to young houndsmen coming up? Go to the meetings, you know. Try to contribute. Try to stick together with everybody. Everybody's got, you know, we're all individuals, but. Well, yeah, they have we the love New our freedom. They have the New Mexico Houndsman Association. I guess so. I've never been a member. I'm a member of the Guide Association. I buy, I'm a member of the Trappers Association. I've never set a trap in my life. I don't know how to set a trap, but I'm all for them. <laughs> yeah, I'm part I'm of all, the, I, I'm a member. I'm member a, I, mean, I just got a thing from them the other day. And um, I'm not one to go. In. I've only been to one meeting in my life, and that was that meeting that, yeah, yeah. that we all went to. 
But well, I found out if you don't go to the meetings, they'll run over you. I mean, you got to fight for what you got. I mean, and you can't go to every meeting, and they pretty much got us outnumbered. But it's still, it's worth going and putting in your two cents because, <clears throat> you know, not everybody's going to roll, you know, cave in to their... Their agenda. You There's know? a bunch of yahoos that go to those meetings. Well, you know, they don't contribute. You know, the, I say the hunters, you know, you buy your license, you know. Uh, I had a hunter this winter. We treat a nice tom after trailing it. That old red was with me. Yeah. We trailed it, you know, pretty much. We hit the track in the afternoon, and they moved it out. It was a good track, you know. Mm-hmm. And they moved it out, and they went on, and they treated it on the, right on the edge of the county road on a, in a cottonwood tree. 10 feet from the county, not even 10 feet from the county road, and this guy wouldn't let me shoot it. Yeah, and, and that's when you when I, you went to court with that. Well, no, they you? just dismissed it, and I couldn't believe it. Uh, his wife came down, and she was cussing us out. And, you well, know, she hit you or something, didn't she? She came out and pushed me, and I had a hunter there and all, and, and they sicked the game department on I me. Mean, there was nothing, you know, with the, the game department was no help. I, and the next day, I was there early at daylight with a couple fresh dogs, going to walk down the county road, and start to track from the line left and have another day of it, you know? Yeah. Try to figure it out. Game warden was waiting for me. He said, Mike, I wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it, Mike. And he was kind of telling me, I don't want to cite you. You know, what could you cite me for? But here's the deal. I got a special use permit. I got a stupid outfitter license. They got all this stuff where you or even Jim could say, hey, buddy, this is a county road. You can't keep me from walking my dog. There's no leash law here in this county. Was it, was it a nice line in that tree? Oh, Big Tom. I couldn't get him out. I was bombing him with rocks. <laughs> he was safe right there. Oh, he was, a, oh, he was a good Tom. I'm not just saying that. He must have been full because yeah. I couldn't get him. Though. And we stayed a little too late until dark throwing rocks at him. I couldn't even get him to stand up in the lit branch. Just a big old Tom laying up there. And he was up pretty high, too, up on a big old limb sticking out. And I had like 10 dogs, and they were just, they'd been there for a while. I get there. And I start tying, the guy had a bow, you know. I said, man, you know. Pretty soon his truck drives up, comes down. He, and, and he said, what are you fixing to do? I said, we're fixing to shoot this line. He says, no, you're not. Not on my private property. I said, what are you talking about, mister? I said, this is what I do. I said, we follow this line the better part of the day. So the hunter kind of get, he's in a pickle. He don't know what to do. Yeah, that, that was the first time that's ever happened to me. Yeah. What do most guys carry f- to shoot lions with? What do you, every- I tell them a 30-30. 30-30. I tell them just, because, you know, I don't have to, you know. Bears the same it thing? Ain't, it ain't the killing. Bears the same thing? Yeah, yeah, it ain't the killing, it's the hunt. You know, it, it's, you know, usually shooting them is the, you know. It's over with, the, the yeah. easy part, right. And yeah. it's just, yeah. it's not like it's. Right, right, right. That's why it's kind of not good to film it, because yeah. it's just too much of a damn. Yeah. It yeah. takes away from everything it yeah. took to get there. And that's it the, does. It, I agree. And the older I get, the more I see it, too. It starts affecting you. Right. You know, it's it, it, you, know you go, you go. that's one last line. It's anti You're something like that. You know, you go, damn, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, then, you know, yeah, there's whatever. But I know what you yeah. mean. Yeah. How, how's night swimming, Mike? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that hunter heard me splashing around. We got here to the house. We rode from Hermosa long way across and we got down in this canyon it was after dark coming down and you know it's all choked with salt cedar and, and, and I had a little cut out a little and that mule missed it and I knew I missed it I rode just like from here to your truck and I knew you son of a bitch and there was a pool and that starlight was shining it was, you know and I thought yeah shit this ain't you know I'm sticking the steel to that donkey you know and that donkey wouldn't go and I started laying on that donkey and pretty soon she jumped in and man we, I was in my armpits oh it was a, I mean there was no was bottom I never touched the bottom <laughs> <laughs> it was just a big old hole <laughs> and I'm swimming around it. that hunter he ain't saying shit he's a surgeon from Albuquerque at the heart hospital and he got knocked off the day before and split his head open so he's got blood and I glued his glasses to his head with super glue <laughs> well, try to seal it that split? yeah I'm trying to split you know <laughs> so he was all anyway we got back here to the house and he had a bottle of whiskey in the pannier you know he said where's that whiskey you know dug around but let's have a drink he said let's just let's just drink to being alive he said <laughs> <laughs> 
he's, we and I was walking because you know you can't get back on after that. I just gonna I was so pissed off, you know. I just walked to stay warm, you know. And I was hooking it down the canyon. I'm just stepping it out. He said, "Hey, by the way, how's the water?" You know, <laughs> just messing. <laughs> you know, we're cold. Water. Yeah. Well, you know, only you, you, you know, it's between the ears. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I was so damn mad. I think I wasn't cold. You know what I'm saying? I was so like, I can't. You know, I couldn't believe I had a damn rifle in a scabbard. I had chaps on. I hardly ever wear chaps. Okay, guys, if you made it clear to the end of the video, I want to thank you. I also want to say, you know, if you have any any questions or anything, you know, comment down below and let me know. Crash that like button. And uh, I got something to ask. If you like this content and you like the interviews, on my channel page, on my YouTube channel page, there's a little... Uh, I think it's a little blue button that says join. You can join and help support my channel by uh, by joining. You know, it costs like $2 or $5 a month, something like that. And it's going to help me get down the road and get to see some more of these guys interview them. I'm trying to get as much as I can done while these guys are still around. Because we're a lot of these old timers that started out and hunted the old-fashioned way we're losing them i mean just a matter of time so if you want to help i sure appreciate it i also have some merch you know you can send me an email i'll put my email in the description down below and uh it's a little water jugs you can have either the the it's a tradition or born 100 years too late on those or coffee cup so that all helps i make a little bit of money off of it and it helps me do what i do so hope you enjoyed the video stay tuned for more got more coming up plus this is all available through w supply hunting supply on their podcast you can find it on itunes and spotify and stitcher maybe not stitcher i'm not sure maybe not spotify but i know you can get it on itunes because that's where i get it and uh I, I provide them with the content and they put it up on their on their podcast and so if you're driving down the road or or whatever and you don't have time to look at the video watch the podcast listen to it all right thanks turn it off